What's going on, people? We've got a special surprise for all of you here. My name is James Banks. We've got Launders and Anders, the guys that need no introduction whatsoever. And this is Blast Overtime. Now we're bringing you guys some match one analysis using the fantastic tool that Anders has been working on for quite some time now, it's Skybox. So we get to give people not only your insight into it, because Skybox is a very interesting program, but we got the mastermind behind the tactical side of things as well in Launders. Launders, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, how is this program not a glorified Polly Pocket? <laughs> it is. That, that's the beauty of it. Like everyone loved that. Um, we we're trying to just guess at what was the what was the boys' version. The boys' version I Max. I don't remember. Yeah. But it is actually that. Uh, that's the, one of the things that I like. Is having a world of Counter Strike, you know, mm -hmm. to, to mess around with. So it is. Yeah, in a way, I, yeah. I'll accept that. I think that's like, a compliment. But it's like Polly Pocket in, a, in more dynamic because you could just like load a demo into it and then get different characters out of the same. Toy. Yeah. That's why you should own Skybox. There we it, go. It went once that's available a, for public. That's a huge endorsement. I use. appreciate that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, what we, what we want to try and do, I guess, is, is fish like a couple of rounds, um, just like sort of talk about them in a in a somewhat loose style. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're not try, we're not trying to be very constricted by, I guess, you know, just any kind of the script. Social <laughs> yeah. norms and laws. No, and rules. nothing like that. Uh, yeah. It's just free reign to have some fun. Yeah. Show off what we love, which is Counter Strike, and some of the action from today. I mm -hmm. guess what we will do is do sort of somewhat chronological order, so that we don't mess everything up. So I started. <laughs> Day, obviously, it was uh, NIP and FaZe playing, yeah. and first map was Overpass. So why don't we try and take a look? I found a couple of rounds, and I'll just, I'll just, sh I'll just show you guys what I think was interesting about them, and then we can, we can go from there. Mm -hmm. Let's do um, it. Yeah, so if we go into it, um, I guess I just want to show you. So, so for those of you who've never seen this before, the whole point is to have sort of a whole world where we can see everything that's going on. Um, and we have all the rounds. We can go to any round that we want, um, which is sort of part of the point here. Now, what we want to do actually is, is we're going to clear up some of the visibility a bit. So we're going to remove all of the sort of details that you normally would see in a map, but we don't really mm -hmm. need for this. And actually, we'll try and increase the contrast. So we'll blueprint everything, and then we'll highlight the ground. And this, now we can see all yeah. the red is all the walkable areas. Once we've got that going on, we're actually going to clear all of the buildings. So that will leave just the red ground left where people are walking around. So this is just, this might seem a little bit confusing, but the whole point is just to try and give you a sense for what's actually going on. And we would just want to see one area here. And the first round that I wanted to look at, coming up with a round selector, um, is the fifth round. And it, it's a bit of a, you can actually see sort of the part of the problem early on is NIP don't have that many grenades to work with. They're not completely wrecked, but they end up doing very late execute into the round. So I'm just going to scroll forward here uh, in time because what happens is happening very, very late. And by the time we get there, and this is really the only, this was why I'm scrolling past this, none of this really matters outside of the fact that NIP are one, running out of time, and they've used almost all of their grenades. And the problem they run into, if we just go down a little bit here, they want to try and clear in through the monster tunnel, right? Like, that's the big plan that they're mm -hmm. going for. And normally, if you do that, you, you actually want to be able to throw a lot of different grenades, right? Normally, you want to be able to throw Molotovs to these positions. You want to clear out this position out here on the right-hand side and just flash and everything else. And, and they're having a really hard time doing that. So that smoke goes up from the CT side, buys time for Brokey and Cold Zero to get into this position. And once they're there, it, it just now it's going to get really bad for Nip. We're just going to scroll forward a little bit. Again, now we're really running the clock down, 20 seconds. So they can't change their minds. Mm -hmm. They are committed to this push at the moment. And when they go through, again, they can't throw any grenades against Broken because yeah. they just don't have them. And as a result, even though he only has a FAMAS, he gets this long fight that buys time for Cold Sierra to set up this flash on his own, <laughs> and it just wrecks them. So again, sort of combination of running out of time and not having the grenades is really deadly. And I'm just going to try and do this again. I'm going to slow down the speed of this a little bit, so we're just down to half speed. Then I'm going to put on the grenade range indicator, which is, which is just the way that we can we get a sense for just exactly how that grenade is for well time. Like, it's happening as Brokey dies. He's setting it up, Coral Zero. There we go, pops in, oh, falls brilliant. back. Brokey dies, flashes out. And, like, they can't react. There's no way no. to do that. Yeah. And I bet you if they'd had grenades or anything else like that, it would have been it would have been so much easier for NIP to deal with that. So I thought that was a fun round, just as a just an example to look at. Yeah, there's a there's something this interesting correlation in Counter Strike where w between the player that's in the position that's hardest to rotate out of mm. and the one that's strongest for defending the site. Like if you got Brokey on the let's like Pit on Inferno, it's like the farthest away from B, yeah. but it's widely known as like the strongest position to defend the A site from. Because of the versatility, but also just because of like the hard angles that you get on like some of the lane players. On overpass here on the left side of Monster, they have that smoke that they keep later on to the round. 
And then when they throw that, they're able to get in the two strongest spots to defend yeah. against Monster. And it's already so late in the round, as you mentioned, that it's really easy for him to get those kills. Obviously, Coldzera does most of the work, but yeah. Brokey causing a distraction mm -hmm. means Coldzera can get three kills. Normally, you're lucky to get two in that spot. Big time. And, and think for Nip, right? We saw this across most of the games. That T sides were incredibly slow. Yeah, they were. And like they were slow and they were poor. So they, they wouldn't have those grenades most of the time. And it's like the, just the, the amount of punishment you receive in that position is it's it's hard to, to, to deal with. Yeah, it's, something, it's like a game of inches too. Like Brokey, what we talked about before was that Brokey sprays with the Thomas for like, uh, I mean, we could probably show it again, but like yeah, it's, it's, he, he doesn't take that. Yeah, he doesn't take that much time in like real time. But in Counter-Strike time, it really yeah. feels like forever because Coldzera gets the flash off. It bounces off of the pillar in the site and pops just when he needs to peek and those guys are already tension turned and facing Brokey yeah. mm. straight in the same direction as him as well. And obviously they wanted this to be sort of a pincer movement going in from two sides, right? So the rest of the NIP team was supposed to sort of come in and join, but when one half of that pincer is gone, then and then it's not much strat left. And they can kind of refresh each other's positions. So yeah. Coldzera can move into Brokey's spot if he wants to. His teammate dies, so he comes back to shore. But what happens is they keep replacing the guy in the best position, and then B is just like impossible to get into. But in general, phases rotations all game were amazing. I like it yeah. felt like NIP were so disappointing, but it's hard to say if it's because FaZe are doing such a good job controlling the tempo every single round. <laughs> yeah. They always had info and they always on, on CT side like had the right stacks. Yeah, I really, I, and there was a, I mean, one of the things that I thought was frustrating watching um, NIP on the CT side was how they, they would have a very hard time f getting information about what FaZe were even doing when they were on the T side. Actually, the next round that we, we can try and take a look at kind of Still highlights it. that. Um, so yeah, just, that's round of a 19. And I think one of the things that, that I just found to be interesting, about it, it sort of starts at the B bomb side. Again, I'm just gonna be scrolling a little bit forward into this round because that's where most of the fun happens. Essentially, the first thing that happens in this round is Lecro gets in a fight with all of my that he loses. I would chalk that up to just being like unlucky. This round is different if Lecro wins it and, and probably like 50-50 he does. Yeah. But regardless what happens here, I think anyway, um, and it would, I mean, we need to interview the players at some point because we don't know for sure, but I would guess what happens is because it's now four versus five, it's, it's very likely that NIP would either leave two on B and two on A, or you, at, at the very you know, worst, I guess, they would have three on, on B and then one on A, and this guy, guy, if he's alone up here, he would just be spotting for info. He would try and yeah. get, you know, get a call in, or they would be two two. So one of those two things. There's, it's almost no, there's almost no way that they would have three and one B because that is a very, that's, <laughs> that's, not a, that's generally a, a bad time. But what happens is, phase, they, sort of, they take this early lead, they take the four on five, they say, fine, we're gonna go back, we're gonna clear out all of restrooms. NIP don't know this. There's no one from NIP checking anything over here, which is, that's the first problem, right? Then if we just keep scrolling forward a little bit quickly, now they're moving into a position where they can actually attack the A bomb site and still nobody knows. So I'm just gonna like change the camera here just so that we can get a sense for how this works out. You see the sight lines for NIP here, uh, res and twist, I believe. And so, so a couple of things are happening right now. First of all, they don't know what's happening outside. No one ever here for NIP is actually looking outside of the A bomb site and also, these two people down at the B bomb site, they're not moving out to look if anyone is still out there. Yeah. So they just lose all control and So they tried, obviously, in the beginning. They only spent they, they only spent a certain amount of effort though, right? Like they yeah. had they had one player push out at the beginning of the round. I'm gonna take the reins for a second Go, here, crazy. okay? And I'm just gonna scroll back. You guys know I have PTSD this from using the demo viewer. <laughs> Because whenever you oh, try so to scroll bad. back, yeah, you can you never ruined. do this without crashing the entire game. Yeah. We got a couple so, minutes left as well before we move into the next okay, part as well. Okay, so. careful. So, That's fine. Don't yeah. worry about it. Oh crap. Okay. No, I'm good at this. It's fine. He's happy. He's, he's, he's no, playing. No, he's I got long. Oh playing. no, I pressed it. Oh, oh dear. Did I do yeah, that? It's fine. Do you want I, was <laughs> I was on reflex. Okay. So we're moving into the next demo, right? Oh yeah. Can we do that for two minutes? Yeah, um, if, you, if we can get through it in two minutes. It's kind of oh, it's kind of good if this if we get through this pretty quickly anyway for Nip and Face because it was like a sort of a one sided affair. Mm -hmm. yeah. The thing that I just wanted to sort of to highlight on this particular map on Mirage, I thought that was interesting, uh, was that sixth round where they they basically, I mean they they go for like a, well, we'll just go into it here again. We'll do the same thing where we just we just highlight everything. And we're gonna scroll forward a little bit to the action. There's a lot of mid control, and this is one of the problems that NIP had throughout this whole game, is they just they could not really hold mid against FaZe, and FaZe yeah. just kept exploiting that. Mm -hmm. But this is an outrageous uh, sort of scenario where FaZe, again, mid control for all this time as we're scrolling through the round here, just going then. Then they line up three people that are gonna be behind that smoke. You can see this is actually a FaZe smoke. We've colored the smokes, right? And then this flash is gonna be coming in from the middle. That flashbang absolutely destroys the CT player. That's Rez here in the middle. And it's thrown from top mid, which means this player 
he can rotate back and help really quickly. If he throws that from you know here instead, he's got the baton early, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. he can just run with it, also, and they come through the smash. Beautiful. We're, we're in a time where you have to throw that flat. You have to left click it from very far away, otherwise people can hear you throw it. Yeah. There's not other. There's not an easy way to flash in the connector unless you throw it over. So you might as well be. It might as well be from someone who's very very far back. Yep. It might have, and it's, it's one of those little details that's so much fun uh, to watch. And then obviously they, what they do is they have that flashbang, then they follow up with another flashbang to take down the AWPA here in, in CT spawn. So those are two flashbangs to just give them, I mean, the entry kill and then the follow up. And it, it's just, you know, doesn't take, it doesn't take a lot once they have the position. I think that's the, po that's the point of this part of it mm. is you need the position to actually make this work. And I think they just do a, a good job of that. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was exciting. And again, NIP, they, they struggled with that mid controller Mirage. That's a huge takeaway, I think, for, uh, for this so far. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's the first match done, and it was I don't know, it was kind of shocking, wasn't it, um, yes. to, to witness? It was a very interesting first series because maybe we expected a bit more from Nip, but didn't kind of live up to expectations. Maybe need a little bit more time with it. Now we're going to do the second game as well, but before we get to that, Launders has a little bit of a special moment here with CS Money and the skin game for us. What are we going to be looking at to start off with here, Launders? We're going to sit and explain why it is that Brokey played so well, and obviously it's because of his loadout. We know that much. So <laughs> we're going to go ahead and take a look at this uh, CS Money replay package with okay. Brokey's highlights on Mirage. I believe, and I hope. <laughs> we're, we're making sure. We're hoping we're going to get a lot highlights. of highlights today. It's a very competitive day for highlights. Definitely. So if it's somebody else's highlights, I wouldn't be mad or surprised. <laughs> but I'm You'll also take sure got. that it's because of their skins. Let's take a look. Um, up 5-2. to two. This is just him uh, kind of going through the motions all game. Obviously not too much of an impressive skin here with the uh, the black M4. How much do you think that one costs? Uh, I don't know, maybe get it for free? Yeah, probably. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I'll take it. scam someone for that. Um, but yeah. By the way, this was brilliant from him because his movement was just so perfect. Wasn't, isn't it great how like comfortable he looks? When we were yeah. interviewing him yesterday, it was just like, first of all, you're like, yo, man, you got the sleepy eyes. You're, you're like too <laughs> relaxed all the time. He has like the Anders sleepy eyes. <laughs> and I was like, dude, you're playing with a bunch of superstars and maybe it's because you don't realize it and that's why you're so good. Um, yeah, in his mindset, he's just like completely like, oh, it doesn't matter, it's another game of CS. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's all too relaxed. Um, and even on Mirage, I mean, he was doing like a lot of good stuff. And that's just the end of that map. So now we move into the uh, the second map. This is what game you casted. That's Anders, real. I'm sure he stood, up, stood out, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, watching Brokey Orb uh, the way that he did is, is, is amazing. Uh, it was so much fun and a little bit unexpected. I mean, I, he's, he's do, does so many things. So um, just having that versatility with him, I think was, uh, yeah, just, uh, I mean, if, as a phase needed more firepower. Like, that, that wasn't even the thing that they <laughs> That's were... always been their answer. It's good that they stuck to their guns. Yeah, yes. Just doubling down. And it's good that uh, Brokey stuck to his Asimov. Okay. It's, it's just... quite funny because you look at it, right? You look at phases like, yeah, we're just going to build a superstar team. And they had the one really like, yeah, we had Karagam with a great in-game leader. And they're like, nah, that doesn't work. We're just going to no. have like five people that just incredible. And then like the five articles come out. Uh, we shouldn't have kicked uh, Karagam. Yeah. <laughs> our great mistake. While Neo's still on the team. Okay. That was, oh, that was the Neo moment. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yep. Nico continuously, you know, doing that, and then Yanko on the backside. It's all, <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a wild team for sure. It is. Um, but I mean, um, I don't know, Brokey's, it, it is crazy when you think about like, you know, young, young talent. And I think actually we started there on the desk, I think Chad and, or maybe this was backstage, but we should talk about how quickly some of these kids start learning. Oh, that was Yanko, wasn't it? Um, well, actually, you said your, your kid was walking by eight months, right? Yeah, Walter, that's true. I'm not playing CS, but, you know. <laughs> One and a half years old, quick, CS, yeah. better than Anders already. Yeah, we were like, we've got another couple of months before we have to start, you know, taking care of, like, the electrical plugs, and then it was just all over the place, so mm. it's rough. Um, but but just the time, I mean, for those of us who played in 1.6, it was like, mm -hmm. either if you if you knew someone who was a pro player or, like, semi that could help you to, like, understand the, the tricks yeah. in the, of the game, then you would be in a position where you could, like, fast track it. Otherwise, it took years, like, just actual, you know, three or four years for people to get pretty good at the game. Now people everyone's got a YouTube channel. People creating that content and stuff, right? Yeah, that's a big thing. Like, now, that information is so freely available. We're doing stuff like this and breaking down things. We're breaking down more on the desk. Back then, it was just like, you watch GoTV, you tried to copy what they did. Everything Nine times like, out of ten, it would fail, and you'd go, ah, that's yeah. why they're the Or pros. it's like a secret you heard in the grapevine about, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. how to, like, but perform a mechanic about or, like, learn it, movement. It solves, I mean, just to, just to keep it around Brokey, like we started, but it, it, the fact that kids like him are coming up and being so good so early, it solves such a problem that we had. And people forget about this completely, but in, in, in the early days, of global offensive, all we had were people who had switched over from 1.6 yeah. 
and and they were all considered they were all, all obviously legends and stars in 1.6 and there were many people saying like well, you know are they actually going to stick around like some of them have families and you know, they're getting a little bit older and everything mm -hmm. and the question was are we going to get new talent quicker mm -hmm. than the old talent retires and i feel like that's done like that conversation has been yeah. solved we, we are it. yeah which is huge because think of what would happen if the, to the game if that wasn't true yeah, like you know, at, you know, I hope it never happens. But w one day, Forrest is gonna you know retire from the Whoa, game. Whoa, chill, man! And it'll be <laughs> it's supposed to be an upbeat live stream. No, right? I know, but talk about good things, only positive. But then Brokey will be. That's the that's the good thing, you know. You you get like other people in there that you, you actually know. in your cast. You said there's like a lot of Forrest in Sweden or something like that. And I was like, are you kidding me? You didn't even realize that you said I that. I don't think I said that. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, if I said that, then I must have been drunk at the time or something we'll like that. Like three hours ago, you were smashed. It's. He finished I, call. I don't even remember don't it. It's so like, I, just, I don't even remember it. Listen, well, I think you might be you might be setting me up. I feel like this is just all this, right, is, go this on. is Anders being trapped by Launders, so I'm gonna swiftly move us on. Let's take a look at the next match analysis. It's gonna be taking a deeper look into MIBR taking on Team Liquid. Do you want me to use them? That's right, we're yeah. back and ready for it. You can finish what you were starting to say there, Launders. Do you want go. me to use the mouse and keyboard or should you take this? <laughs> you know what? Go for it. Uh, no, I was just kidding. I'm not, I literally <laughs> ruined the show. No, it's fine. Please. Um, listen, we'll, we'll get you. We'll, we'll get you. Actually, we'll be fine. Okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah, so Vertigo was obviously... What a way to get started. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe it. I was, I was, uh, I was freaking out yeah. backstage. But um, yeah, so actually what we're going to try and do is just want to remove all of this top building. That's, you know, again, it's in the map, but we, we don't really need to take a look at this at all um, because it, it just becomes a little bit confusing. And then we're going to be sort of trying to take a bird's eye view. We can, if we want, with this particular title stuff, we can go and look at the, at the lower levels oh, of the map, okay. but it is just not that interesting. Like, yeah. it, there, are, there are times when it might be relevant, but we're going to keep it to the upper level for now. Yeah. And then we're just going to kind of do what we did earlier. So we're going we're gonna to go for the blueprint and the highlight. So, th so again, this is kind of the view that I want to show you guys. And even if you've been playing a lot of Vertigo, you might not realize that this is kind of what the upper level looks like, or at least it's, like a, it's a view that you might not be completely used to. So I think it's kind of relevant. Um, there are so many rounds to look at this game that I almost <laughs> lost track a little bit, but we're just going to go to one of them, uh, sort of the ninth round, where I just think this is such an interesting game. It's a cool uh, choice for MIBR to take mid control. So I'm, again, I'm going to forward a little bit. There's an early fight that happens in the middle of the map here. I guess it's sort of like in the early third, sort of third, third of, the, of the map here. Um, where they just have a fight that they, they kind of come out on top a little bit MIBR, but they also reveal where everyone is, right? So, so they have that fight and they say, okay, now it's a two versus three, but they know where we are and we're not sure where maybe the rest of the liquid the defensive team are. So we're going to fall back. There's plenty of time, a minute and 10 seconds on the clock. We don't, we don't need to really do much of anything and we're going to fall back. And you see, this is really confusing to liquid. They first go over to the A-bomb site to check, you know, like, should we group up here? And eventually they decide on going, you know, one A, one B and then MIBR, and this is, this is the next level. They go back to the middle, because I would almost say, like, what's the one place you know they're probably not going to be sticking around and grouped up? Yeah, yeah in mid, I mean, oh, they're late. I can add you some insight here as well. At this point, on the comms, oh, the I comms. think it was Stewie that said there's no one middle. Like, oh. he was just calling it to be like, it's not going to happen. But again, that's calling off of maybe information he had in the past or whatever, which made it interesting, because we all sat there listening going, little do you know what's about to happen? Yeah, and if you're, oh, that's cool. If you're either one of these players, either Elish or, or Stewie here, right, you, you, want, you want to take one fight and get a kill early and then fall back and call your teammates or at least two on two. The one thing you're not expecting, and Stewie's not even looking that way, <laughs> is that they'll actually shoot you from where you just came from. Yeah. So yeah. I just think that's such a, like, and it, it goes to a more general point, I suppose, about mid on this map, which is just, like, this part of the map is huge. <laughs> if you can get that control on the T side, you've it's, done it. It's funny because, like, Liquid win this map, but they barely tried to take mid on their T side. And they, yeah, they, it's they, changed they, again, hasn't it? Because at the beginning, everyone was like, yeah, focus around mid control. Then we saw people split away from it, and now... Just go straight to A or straight to yeah, B. Yeah, it was the yeah. fast hits all the time. And Liquid, like, uh, they, everyone's having trouble winning rounds in post plants on B. They keep... Uh, yeah. It's like, it feels like it's cash A site, where, like, yeah. uh, you have to, like, yes. push a little bit more to get your kills, and then you win the rounds. But when it's four on four, it seems like the CTs are almost always winning because they can throw, like, an incendiary on default. Nitro was throwing that a lot. And then all the other kills are... You know exactly where everyone is behind the the one pillar the, yeah the, around the perimeter and they're easy to flush out basically and so everyone starts going back to those a site setups but it was nice to see mibr try to attempt to use mid more yeah mm -hmm. and we can see the value here obviously stewie gets shot in the side in a three on two trying to hold down a site because there's too many choke points and as a general i mean in general in counter-strike like people don't play people at mid if you're low numbers on ct side yeah. um so it's just like uh, smart fundamentals from uh 
for MIBR to come out. Again. Yeah, I mean, a three on two could really quickly change, right? Like you, you walk into Stewie's orb over at A, and it's a two on two, and then, uh, and I mean, they used, use, they use the time they have as well. They have a minute and ten seconds. Why not try and go for something a little bit deeper? Yeah. So I thought that was definitely interesting. Um, once they go to play on the other side, uh, MIBR twenty seventh round, they have a they have a pretty cool uh, they have a pretty cool setup where. Uh, this is just, I think, showing the power of, of, of information and, and just knowing what's going on. Um, they start with a three-man stack here. That's MIBR now playing on the CT side over at the or at the say bomb side, and they sort of go for a little bit of an early, you know, check. They see no one's really there. I mean, they, they're they're walking around a terrorist smoke, and that's fine. Just forget about what's happening on the rest of the map for right now. They they eventually fall and is going to get a kill here. He's the first to pick up a kill um, down towards the middle. So once he does that, Taco is actually going to take up position. So there's the kill. So now Fallen's going to start to fall back, and you can see him just, you know, he's, he's running back at this point in time. If we go to the lower level, Taco's playing down here by the forklift. There's that big box that you all know. And this is so smart. The rest of the T side for Liquid, they're all over here ready to attack the B bomb side. Mm. Taco, if he was feeling really greedy, could try and push up and sneak in kills or something like that, you know, sh shoot someone in the back, and he doesn't. And I, I just, I really enjoy that. He's just the doorman, just waiting for them to he's just <laughs> doing make it. a mistake. He's yeah? just happy for that to go through, right? So he's just going to stay down there for the rest of the round, and then over on the other side, they can start to group people in. They can say, that's fine. We know how many people are going to be coming. So everyone rotate. We've got two in middle. We've got two now at the B-bomb site. So it's essentially a four-man stack pretty close to the B-bomb site while Taco is holding it. And if they ever fall back, he would know it. And yeah. he would just be wait, wait, ready and waiting. So this is this is Liquid actually walking into a trap without even knowing it at this point in time. Yeah. So that was that was great plays, solid decision making from Taco. They're kind of like uh, they're they're plugging the bathtub and then swirling around to the other site, right? There we go. And <laughs> yeah, no one can come up the drain. No crocodiles coming out of the drain on this one. No liquid escaping. No liquid hey. escaping, right? There we go. Um, and the, the other thing that's interesting about that is just like. Even in an in, in even number situation, like the psychology of the round mm -hmm. is that if you are the one attacking the other site and you know half the map is under your control, yeah. you even though you still have the same job of taking a site where you don't know where everyone is, you are way more aware of the thought that like they could be on any angle, right? Yeah. It helps you win fights and it's an intangible, but it's very important. Yeah. The information helps you be aware. It, it'll make sure you don't skip angles and it'll give you more confidence moving into a site. Yeah, absolutely. So. So that's a good round. I mean, close. There's a 13, 13 scoreline at this point in time. So, good round to be making that. It was a crazy close game. It was looking yeah. potentially like Liquid may have uh, fumbled it on the first hurdle. Yeah. Well, let's have a quick look at Inferno as well. Let's make sure we grab some of that because we Inferno definitely. was one where Liquid took back control, even though MIVR tried to make some sort of a comeback. It wasn't meant yeah. to be. I, I mean, I, we talked. You brought this up as well. You wanted to talk about the pistol round, I believe. And, yeah. And I, I wanted to make a little bit of a comparison. Did, did you want to see Liquid's pistol round first? Or? I want to see the first round of the game. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Liquid's first round of the game pistol. is going to be this one. And again, just if you're new to it, we're just going to be, you know, highlighting everything, removing all the buildings. So this is essentially it. Uh, you know, A side going to be here, B over here, and everything. In case you're confused. But yeah. Um, yeah so. They just basically, it, this T-side pistol, it's it's interesting the setup for MIBR because they set up in graveyard, three around the pit area, one in the halls, I guess, and then it's liquid to just open up and go through arch, which is wide open on our screens, which probably means that it's some kind of read by liquid because yeah. they know a bit too much. And this is where it's interesting for me because if we pause in a second, if we look at like graveyard, I think that's the more, most important position to talk about. If we come through lane, Graveyard has a wall facing lane. Mayern could be a huge problem. Yeah. But here, if they come around Arch, he's going to feel very uncomfortable as soon as they turn that corner. He pops his head up, and then he's got to take a shot, or he's going to die because he has nowhere to run on the stairs, right? <laughs> if, if it's, it's, it's a gift and a curse to be in Graveyard on the pistol round, because on the one hand, you have an impenetrable wall. No yeah. gun on the pistol round can get through it. But on the other hand, you can't move. So if you miss your shot, it's just you're going to get hit You've in the head right, by a bullets. mallet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then when Mayern dies, it's obviously a whole lot of an easier round. Now, if you look at the cone fire coming from Mayern and from the pit, coming through lane would be terrible. Yeah. Wrapping Arch here absolutely destroys them, though. Yeah. And, and they don't have to worry about different. the USP from KNG. Like, that smoke is just making sure that mm. there's no long-range fire. Right. I'm just laughing because of how he, he's going to stand up. And how many the lasers are on? It's like, yeah. there we go. They're just all looking at him. That's, yeah. that's so rough. Yeah, this is a, this is a beautiful round. And I, I think what I wanted to, to do and what I took away from this round is look at how much MIBR are way back. They're giving all this space for Liquid yeah. to work with. They can set this all up. There's no one fighting them. And I wanted to try and contrast that with the 16th round. So that's, that's the pistol round for... Um, 
for liquid instead when they're on the CT side, and we're just going to you know, speed it back up to normal time. But actually, let's do a you know a little bit faster than normal. Um, this is so aggressive. Like this, well, this is, is the, the mid aggression. This is, yeah, this yeah. is the opposite, right? They're saying, you know what, MIBI, you are just not going to be any kind of a time for you to to sort of mess around. You're not going to set anything up. We'll take this control. We'll take this fight, and whatever plan you had, it's cancelled. Like at the very minimum, you have to react to this, and uh, that's such a liquid way of playing these pistol rounds. Where's I, in, Taco at this point? Because he's the one who just, he thought he had a flank, and they just wrecked him straight after. But as well. he's he had not no even hope. sure. Like, how, like <laughs> no one can call anything. How, yeah. Someone it's would have madness. to make a call to Taco to say, and actually, they've probably seen Nitro no, yeah, here. That's what that's what happened right so there. So he's they like, had an idea. what do I do? Do I walk forward and look left or right? And like, he's, he's just not finding one, them. missed a shot, but it's like already too late. You know. Yeah. That's the thing. If he, he has to literally land the first shot, otherwise it's complete game over for him. That's, that's so, the way it just went terrible. That's mm -hmm. an unbelievably, uh, I think that's just a, that's a cool contrast between those two teams. It's not that you always have to play aggressive on CT side or whatever, but but you but you can see the power of what Liquid is doing. And I've seen them do it many, many times on, on Inferno specifically. And actually, generally, I think Liquid are just a team that's fun to watch for pistol round, like, mm. you know, tricks in general. They're, they're good at that. A high win rate. Something a little yeah. bit more um, catch you off guard, right? Yeah. And you, you have to, like, pistol rounds are so weird, right? There was a, there was a, remember there was a conversation at one point where people were saying, should there even be pistol rounds? Like, should we get rid of them? I remember Sean Gare saying pistol rounds aren't real CS. Yeah. And I really, I, I gel with that just because he was just saying without the utility, yeah. you know, it's a lot more random. And that, that can be true, you know, nobody's sporting like a 60 to 70% win rate on pistol rounds. No. I mean, in general, most people aren't doing that on any rounds, but with pistol rounds, it's like 50-50 at best. Yeah. And there's almost only so much strategy. A lot of it just comes down to how quickly you can get USB headshots. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, I think just from the entertainment, if you had to make the counter argument, right? The entertainment is people have to come up with something crazy because, you know, just playing it standard, slow, careful, it's like... That's probably not going to work so yeah. much. And it's so, nice when you see Styles clash like we just watched them. Yeah, those completely polar opposites with it. But yeah. that's us done, boys. That's been a very quick. Oh, that's oh wow! Yeah, so yeah far. <laughs> really quick because we're enjoying it so much from watching Skybox. But any final thoughts on that? We had a good opening first day, and God, tomorrow's probably going to be even better. I feel like every CS game needs a second look. Skybox. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> you got the taglines coming out from Laundus as well. It. There we go. Um, so you need marketing, you've got Laundus. Yeah, yeah I, I'm already I'm excited about that. He's, he's already good at that. Have you seen his social media? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Fire, Mr. On Holiday 24 7. Always wearing shorts. <laughs> he's got the fashion, got the vacation. I, um, well, I just I guess I just want to ask people feedback. If you watched this and you enjoyed it and yeah. you thought it was cool and, and you want to you know, see more of it, or, or just give us some feedback um, and we'll try and improve it. I, I, my first initial reaction is we need like, quadruple the time at least <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah. we'll see how that goes well I, I asked you for it what maybe i don't know just just after the major or so and the thing that it really helped me with was just in general adding more than just being a host or an interviewer that i can look at more in-depth stuff and go a little bit deeper into what some of these teams are doing ahead of my prep for it i love it you guys at home hopefully enjoyed it as well but like anders said go and give him some feedback go and check out skybox if you've got the chance doesn't matter what level you are in your game if you want to take it to the next level a tool like this can be very helpful but we're done with we'll see you guys tomorrow for the rest of blast premier london it's going to be day two and have a fantastic evening or day wherever you are in the world we'll see you tomorrow